Let's finish this monstrosity by looking at animations one more time. Alright, we find ourselves back in a block bench once more with our little guy over here, the Chomper. <laughs> and let's just see one last animation over here. This sort of concludes our block bench series for Gecko Lip in this case. Once again, my animations as well as my modeling as well as my painting, you know, it's all not the craziest and all not the best. However, once again, Hopefully as a demonstration it will do for you to, you know, get inspired, try your own things and just try out. Like, j really, just download it, try it out and just see what you can make. And you're just going to get better with each iteration that you make, basically. All right, so we wanted to add a attack animation right now. So this is what we're going to do. So we're just going to be animation chopper dot attack. Now, this will probably only play once. So this will only play when the attack actually happens and then it will no longer play. And... What we'll do here as well is we'll use some functions that we can use. So there are a few functions that are pretty, like, actually pretty amazing in Blockbench in this case that we can use. And we'll take a look at those in a moment. So, of course, what I definitely want for the attack is I want both the upper and the lower jaw to, you know, sort of move. So let's just center the pivot for both of them. And, you know, I definitely want to, like, move this up. Actually, I want the pivot to be at the point where it actually would open so let's just make this right here ish and then for this one right here ish so once again the pivot tool here coming in totally fine oh that's actually not quite right let's see if the other one is also a little bit too high up no i think that that's probably going to be exactly where i want it to be and this one is probably also pretty good that's i like that that is pretty awesome so first of all, what I can do now is, well, let's just get the rotation and the position probably for both of them saved over here. And then when the, you know, animation hits, we want to rotate it around, right? So we want to open the jaws of death. Yo, that's amazing. Th minus 32. Actually, minus 32. Let's try to put that on both of them. Oh, well, this would need to be plus 32 probably. There you go. So that's probably going to be pretty good. What happens if I were to, like, make this, like, go up and down a little bit, right? So maybe plus 32... And then here I would want to do like a, maybe like a 16, right? So that it closes a little bit again. Actually, maybe like a 12, right? So it, it like opens up and closes a little bit. And here I would want to do a negative 12. How, how would that one look? Let's just see, select nothing over here. And then, okay, so that's like pretty good already. I'm actually like pretty happy with that. So maybe one more of those. Right? So that it like sort of opens and closes and opens and closes. Maybe it's a little bit of a too long attack animation, actually. So I don't really have any, you know, rule of thumb on how long the animations should be. I guess like an attack animation, like a second should be more than enough usually for an attack animation. So I think that maybe we can try to like try to get that done. Let's just get this a little bit closer here. And then let's get this one so that it basically resets again. Yeah, I think that that's pretty good. So it looks like it chomps down, chomp, chomp. Chomp, chomp. And of course, once again, it, you know, it's nothing too crazy, but you can definitely play around with this model as well. Add your own animations. I would be surprised if there aren't as many people who could make a really, really awesome animation with this guy, right? Looking at, like, the eye stalks moving around and things like that. Like, you're totally free and open to do that. I, I would actually, I would love to see some stuff. So you can definitely come by the uh, Discord server later. And uh, if you want to do something like that and uh, then post it in the Mod Showcase channel, would be very interesting indeed. But anyway, let's uh, also, you know, get the arms in here as well. Because I feel like the arms should also be in there. Let's start with this and then just make the arm, like, just move in there. Like, just, just something like that. That the arm moves in a little bit and be a little bit faster. Yeah, a little bit faster, and then we're just going to duplicate this, and let's just make this arm then go up a little bit, maybe like something like that, like craziness, and then it goes down again very fast. All right, maybe something like that. That, that could that could work. I mean, why not? Sure. And then we'll do we'll try the same thing for this arm. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll see. It actually is not that bad. I'm actually not that like I'm not opposed to it all overall. Right? I I want the body to move a little bit like. I want everything, basically. Like, I want the entire thing to move a tiny bit. Now, of course, the head and the body are separate, but that's going to be okay. I think that that's not going to be the worst thing ever. So can I pivot the center pivot the body? I cannot center pivot the body, probably because there's too many um, too many things in there, I would argue. But that's not going to be okay. So let's get the head in first. Let's just move the head, like, a tiny bit up. That's actually already too much. Maybe, like, 0.9. And then I also want to rotate it a little bit, like, towards the, the victim, let's say. 
Um, make sure that the position here is also zero in the beginning. So let's just see. Yeah, something like that. And then it moves back. That's actually perfect. Yeah, that's actually really good. Yeah, that's... Look at this, right? Like, just with a few things, this already is, like... I think this is much better than my walking animation last time. Um, I gotta be honest, like, the walking animation... I'm not the biggest fan of the walking animation. However, you know, it it is what it is, right? It's... We'll see. So let's just make this rotate around a little bit as well. Let's just do a zero in the beginning. Uh, let's also make this move a little bit in so that you basically move a little bit in, but like less than the less than the head. Yeah. Okay. And then we just need to reset it again at the end here. So that it moves back. Yo, this is great. Honestly, I'm okay with that as a as an attack animation. I think this is actually already really good. I'm surprised by this. Okay, so now we can also take a look at something else, and that is going to be, let's just do it, the eyes over here, because I, I think that the eyes could actually benefit from this. So instead of using the keyframes here, we can also use math functions. So let's do math.sin, so this would be a sine wave, and what we can do is, is we can use query.anim underscore time is the actual thing here. Now, sadly, I am unsure where we could get like a list of these functions and the variables that we can use i have not found anything online if anyone has found it i will pin your comment in the in the comments below if you have found something uh, and like actually can get this to to me that would be absolutely amazing anyway so you basically make a sine wave and what this will well roughly do is it will basically well move this around now i believe that the y is actually no y should, would be the correct thing so what we can do is we can times this by something and then we can times this by something as well. And this is going to basically change it. So we can, let's just take a look at the left eye. So we can see like it moves a little bit, but it moves t a tiny bit. So let's do a hundred and a hundred for both of them. And then you can see all of a sudden it actually moves quite, quite crazily over here. So maybe it's a little bit too much. So maybe we want a 50 over here. And you can see that basically changes both the, you know, you can either change the amplitude or the, or the cycle, I guess that that would be the the, the way to describe that. Let's just do a. So this would be the sort of strength of the of the um of the stuff, and then this would be like how long it takes to do a full rotation, basically. So you can see this is like actually not not gonna be do anything. Let's do maybe a fifty over here, and that's gonna be like a little bit faster. And if we do like a five hundred, then I should it should go like really fast, right? Yeah, exactly. So you can see you know this basically controls the time, and this controls you know how far it basically is gonna go. So if I did, I don't know, like 250, it might actually go like, yeah, fully around, <laughs> like absolutely freaking crazy over here. And this would also be too fast. So maybe we want to do a 50 with this craziness, right? And then it just like goes around, but doesn't quite work. So that is also something you can do. Uh, you can do, I highly recommend just playing around with this a lot because this can be like just an amazing thing because you only need to set one keyframe and it just does the rest for you, basically, right? You just need to play around with, this with these two numbers and that's going to be that. So I could just you know, add this here as well. Think should we do put this in the very beginning? And then we can maybe say a negative so that it rotates in the same direction as this one. And then you can see they're both like moving in as well. There we go. And then they're resetting again. So you can do this or you can make it so that, you know, you make sure that the um the rotation here matches so that you, you know, end up back at the same place. That also works, right? So you you change the numbers as you know until it basically goes into the same place again when we uh, end the animation. That is a little bit more tricky, but it can still work. You can still get this to, to, to do that as well. But that's pretty awesome in my mind. And um, yeah, that's definitely something I definitely wanted to show you as well. So let's just take a look at the tech animation again. I'm actually really happy with it. Honestly, like it isn't, it's a, an intermediate, maybe, maybe, honestly, this is a beginner animation, right? This is not, this is not a great animation. I've not animated too many uh, models in my time, but it's still pretty cool. I really like it. And... I honestly think this is this is pretty awesome. Like this, if this thing comes running up to you and then doing that, I think that that's pretty scary. I think that that's pretty good, and I'm happy with it. So let's save it. Let's save the you know replace the JSON file over here, and now we have the idle animation, the walk animation, and the attack animation, and these we'll use in the next tutorials for Forge and Fabric, and basically we'll implement a custom hostile entity. Well, first of all, we'll do the you know custom entity stuff, right? All of the different like uh, hostile. All of the entity things, right? Gecko lib entity. And then we'll afterwards also add the hostile attack animation and stuff. Because for that, we'll actually need a custom goal. So we'll take a little bit of a look into AI, but not too crazy. So don't get like too high hopes uh, because AI is still like a crazy, crazy thing for entities that I'm not 100% sure how I want to cover that. But we'll see in the next tutorials. It's going to be very, very interesting indeed. 
But that concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.